Hey guys, over the last few months I've not really been making that many YouTube videos as I've been helping out a lot of my friends with their cars and keeping them up in tip top condition but I kind of want to just have a bit of a moment to myself where I can just grab the keys and go somewhere, anywhere, who knows where but we're going to take the Rover P6 and my dog and we're going to have a bit of a day out and we're going to film it all on YouTube so let's see where we end up Okay, just refueled. Got some nice BP 98 octane fuel in the Rover. Sat nav's going mad because I've got some vague idea about where I want to go. And Fudge is happy as Larry. Just got to get onto the dual carriageway now. And we are on the M1. Let's see, Fudge. <laughs> Good dog. So I have got a vague idea about where I want to go. Um, yeah, you'll find out as we go along. But it's got a similar theme to around my birthday. So if you watch me on Instagram and Facebook, you'll have a vague idea. You know, it's uh, trains, planes and automobiles is all what I'm about. Um, obviously I'm in my 1960s Rover P6, so we're keeping in period to where we're going. It's gonna be somewhere which is within period, so don't skip fast forward the video, let's just enjoy the ride. But yeah, it should all be pretty cool. Well, we're on the M1 North now, and this road is interesting for a few reasons to do with the 1960s. One reason could be said that a lot of people don't like the M1 for is it is the road that introduced a 70 mile an hour speed limit in the UK because what used to happen in the 1960s, before the speed limit, the M1 was actually an unspeed limited road. So you could do like an autobahn, do whatever speed you liked. And Jaguar and Aston Martin and various car manufacturers, they used to test their cars up and down this road from like Milton Keynes up to down to Market Harbour or from Coventry down to Northampton and back and see how fast they can get like their D-types and E-type Jaguars, preparing them for things like Le Mans and races and stuff like that. Um, I believe it was actually, if you do your research, a uh, AC Cobra that done something like 180 mile an hour or something like that. And of course, the government didn't like that and just slapped a 70 mile an hour speed limit on the M1, which is why we don't have autobahns in the UK at the moment. We have a maximum speed limit of 70 mile an hour. But it's nice, you know, going down this road, Rover P6 from 1967, I think it's 67, my car, I can't remember, it's an E-plate. Um, and, uh, yeah, just, you know, enjoying a bit of nostalgia as well. Even though I live in Northampton, which is right on the M1 anyway, but, you know, it's just a little bit of interesting info. <laughs> so it looks like we've been caught out by the rain, but that is not going to stop my fun today. At the end of the day, these cars, you know, we don't use them every day. Well, I might use my P6 a bit more than what most people do, because they use it all year round. But it's all part of the nostalgia, you know, enjoying a classic car for what it is. Should be enjoying it throughout all weather conditions, because that way you get the best out of the experience of a classic car. I mean, obviously you don't take it out in salted roads. You don't want to do that, you know, I mean, that's just ludicrous. But the rain, yeah, why not, you know? It certainly adds to the nostalgia of it, you know, watching some windscreen wipers do what they're meant to do as opposed to going out just on sunny days. It's all cool. Well, we're here at the Great Central Railway in Corn and Woodhouse. And Fudge is really excited by it. And also, unbeknown to me, there's an MG car show being held. Really nice surprise. We'll go and have a look, see what's going on. So, I always think in life the best surprises are the ones that you don't know about, like today, where we've got this MG car show going on, and we're in Cornham Woodhouse, and I'm here with the Rover and Fudge. There's a good boy. Here, come out, eh? Yeah. Well, they always say in life, make friends, not enemies. And a prime example is today. The 
because my good friend Joseph Lloyd, check out his channel on YouTube, is actually here at this MG event that I didn't know was on. And he's kindly given me a ticket so we can have Juno the Rover set alongside all the other MGs and all the other classic cars that are there down on Cornham Woodhouse Station. station at the post Abingdon weekender and we've got some triumphs. It's a really nice GT6 Mark II. I've seen this one about before because it's quite local to me. Nice little mini. Various MGFs. So we've got this nice little MG magnet here, a nice example of 1950s, and right next to it, an MG4 electric. A nice contrast of old with new. Well, there's a lot of examples here of MG ZRs, ZSs, and also MGFs. But coming over here, there's also two lovely MGBs, one being GT and the other being a nice little roadster there. J Reg 1971 followed by K Reg 1971 as well. It's not something you see at most classic car shows but a nice David Brown tractor followed by a Fordson. Obviously these are part of the railway. Well, there you go, there's a class 50 coming and the 8F steam engine which is going to take me down to Loughborough and hopefully back up to here. What a view. that brought us up here and there's a standard five over there and I imagine that's going to be the one that's going to take us back to Corn and Woodhouse. So we'll have a quick look around the engine shed. We've got 40 minutes so why not? Absolutely magnificent piece of equipment. Standard five. Basically based on a LMS black five. Very well designed engine. So just getting close to the engine shed here. Now back in the 1960s there wasn't an engine shed here at all as this would have been a main line straight through. And we've just got the ATF coming towards us here which pulled us into the station. Probably one of Britain's most notorious class of diesel locomotive shunters, the 08 at the start of the engine shed. A huge crane, looks like class 25. Now this diesel locomotive here, and correct me if I'm wrong, is a class 37, very similar to the class 40, which was involved in the Great Train Robbery. As many people will know, I've done a video on that, the Great Train Robbery, look for the link above. And this is as far down as we can come, and this is one of Britain's most powerful steam locomotives, a BR9F. Well that class 37 looks fantastic in early BR colours. Really does suit it. It's nice to see it in like this colour scheme as opposed to what you normally see them in later colours. And next to it we've got that 2MT. BR standard 2MT. 
in the Great Train Rollery, class 37, and I believe that's class 25. Now the nice thing about Loughborough is it's been used in a lot of film sets, including one of my favourites, which is the Great Train Rollery.